This recording is an introduction to tissues. Our tissues are a group of cells that are specialized to perform a common function. And remember, organs are made up of different tissues. So we're going to be um, in a number of different recordings that you will look at. We'll be looking at four different tissue types, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. And every once in a while, I'll throw in a little bit of some clinical correlations in there. Kind of, but first, let's tie it in what we're talking about today with what we've talked about in the past. Tissues are a great example of complementarity of structure and function. The design of that tissue dictates its function. Why are epithelial tissues designed for secretion and absorption and protection versus, say, muscle tissues are designed for contraction? So the and we have different types of epithelial tissues. We have different types of muscle tissues and, and connective tissues. So the structure of those tissues help to dictate their function. The study of tissues is referred to as histology. So this was a, a subcomponent of microscopic anatomy. So in order to see these, you have to use a microscope and when you're looking at tissues, this is one of the, the structural levels of organization. So we started, we had the molecular level here, or the chemical level, if you want to refer to it as that. Your cellular level, and here it's showing you mitochondria, which is part of the cellular level. Here is the tissue level. The tissues make up organs. Organs make up of organ systems, and all the organ systems help make up an organism. So that's a review of something we've talked about previously. So I want you to think about when we talk about tissues is say um, making a garment, making some clothing, is the types of cloth. What are we going to choose to make say a shirt out of linen or pants? We could say pants or shirt out of linen or silk or jeans. It all depends on what we're going to use it for. I mean, silk is very thin, allows a lot of air to get through, it's very light, but it's not going to be durable. I'm not going to make silk pants to ride um, working on a, on a ranch. I'm going to use blue jeans, they're more durable. So the type of cloth that you pick is you want to um, base it based on what you're going to do with it. So think of the different tissues as the cloth. Now how we attach tissues together to form your organ, you think of you got to use some sort of cell junctions, you got to somehow attach them, you think of your zippers, and you think of buttons. So we'll talk about cellular type of junctions in a, in a subsequent recording. And um, unlike like our garments, sometimes we have some adornments, they're just for looks, but things that we have, we modify certain things, they always serve a function. So for example, say in epithelial tissues, um, you have modifications such as cilia or microvilli. Cilia are designed to move. Microvilli are specially designed for absorption and secretion. So the modifications, there's always going to be a particular function for them. Now we're going to have look at the four tissue types, and I've just abbreviated you, um, these for you is NT stands for nervous tissue. That's specifically more about control. It's going to control things like muscles and glandular or secretions. It's going to be involved in interpretation of information. So the nervous tissue is designed to be able to um, sense things and interpret them. Epithelial tissues are our covers, our lining. It lines body organs. It covers our body. So they're designed to be more about protection and secretion and absorption. Our muscle tissue, we have three different types of muscle tissue. They're designed to contract for movement. And then we're left with our connective tissues. Those are the most abundant of all your tissues because we've got tons of different connective tissues. Think about definitely they connect, but they also support and they have, depending on the connective tissue, they have a multitude of functions. So those are your four major tissue types. Now all these tissue types, the different tissue types that we have, are actually derived from embryonic germ layers. 
So very, very early on in development, the different tissue types are developing. And I'm not going to test you on these. I just want you to be aware of these is we have um, the three um, embryonic germ layers. We have ectoderm, we have endoderm, and we have mesoderm. And they give rise to various tissues. So example, ectoderm gives rise to epithelial tissues as well as nervous tissue. The endoderm gives rise to um, epithelial tissues. Mesoderm gives rise against some epithelial tissues, but all your connective tissues and your muscle tissue are derived from mesoderm. And I've provided you with a table in case you're interested, but again, I won't test you on it. I just want you to be aware of it. Um, but we're just kind of give you an example of where it, you're like, oh, I heard about this before, is say, for example, when I'm teaching AMP2, and I'm discussing the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland is actually broken up into an anterior and posterior pituitary gland. They're actually two different tissues. The anterior pituitary gland is glandular, so it is um, derived from its epithelial tissue versus the posterior pituitary gland is nervous tissue. They actually derive from different embryonic germ layers. So in the same regards to the adrenal gland, the outer adrenal cortex is glandular while the inner adrenal medulla is actually nervous tissue. So that's where that kind of comes into play. So what I do want to mention is a little bit some clinical correlations um, when we talk about tissues. Is if someone talks about cancer, cancers of muscle tissue and nervous tissue are very, very rare. Epithelial and connective tissue cancers are much more common. The reason is, is epithelial tissue and connective tissue divides. They have a greater um, cell division than muscle tissue and nervous tissue. So they have a greater chance where you have uncontrolled cell division and you can have cancers that develop. Now, 90% of cancers originate in epithelial tissue. And they'll use the term, when if I use the term carcinoma, carcinoma is a cancer that originates in epithelial tissue. Now, carcinomas are invasive. They secrete substances that allow them to invade um, surrounding organs and eventually metastasize. And then you can say you can start off with, say, um, cancer in one location, and then it can spread throughout your body because they're much more invasive. So if they use, um, sometimes the terms when they talk about cancers is they'll say, say something like adenocarcinoma. Adeno is a prefix that means glandular. So this is a cancer that originated as a part of glandular tissue. Um, like a lot of your breast cancers um, are from um, glandular epithelial tissue. Um, basal cell carcinoma is a type of skin cancer. Now that's named because the cells resemble the, the basement layer, the basal um, layer of the skin. So that's why they call it basal cell carcinoma. If you see the term sarcoma, which are rare, they're relatively rare compared to carcinomas, these are malignant tumors of non-epithelial tissue. Typically, it's going to be more of connective tissues than anything else, uh, but it could be other things too. Now, if you see these terms, liposarcoma versus lipoma. So you see lipo is part of it. Lipo means fat. So if someone has a lipoma, that's benign. They just have a uh, uncontrolled growth of a, um, fatty cell, um, but it's not invasive. Someone who has liposarcoma, that is malignant. And it has to do with adipose tissue. Leomyosarcoma versus leomyoma. Myo means muscle. Leomyoma refers to smooth muscle. So if someone has a leomyoma, it's a smooth muscle tumor, but it's benign. But a sarcoma is malignant. I've had a leomyoma. 
um, that was removed. I mean, I hate to say when they say benign, benign doesn't always mean doesn't cause you any problems. I have a very large leiomyoma, um, which resulted in me um, losing um, my cervix and my uterus and a fallopian tube and a ovary as a result of it because it was um, pretty much the width of my body. The last one, osteosarcoma versus osteoma. So osteo is a term that means bone. So on the right, this is benign. This one is malignant. So if you ever see those terms. Now, the um, number one uh, cancer is breast cancer, and it's typically the glandular. It's carcinoma, glandular epithelial tissue. My, one of my sisters actually had a, what we call a phylloides tumor, um, in case you're interested, which is a skin can or skin cancer. It's a um, breast cancer, but it's actually connective tissue, um, and that's really well. It's only about four percent of all breast cancers. She, believe it or not, she was lucky that she had that type because it's not doesn't metastasize; just grows very quickly. So she only had to have just removal of the breast. She didn't have to have radiation or chemo as a result of it. Um, second most common type of carcinomas are prostate cancer because prostate's gland. And number three, the, I think um, the number three cause of cancer is lung cancer. So just so you know, in case you're interested. Um, so this, I just want to do the introduction and give you a little bit of clinical correlations. So other um, lectures are going to cover the epithelial tissues, going to look at different types of glandular epithelium, the different types of epithelial tissues, and some other things. So look um, for the various um, lectures over the different tissue types.